as every minute of delay is costly to the steamship company. This Dutch ship, the Sarangan of the Rotterdam Lloyd Company, is arriving from the Orient with a cargo of copra, tea, rubber, and cinnamon. She took on her cargo at Singapore, Ceylon, Manila, and Bombay. All are plague ports. The quarantinable diseases are cholera, plague, smallpox, typhus, and yellow fever. Let's see what happens during this ship's medical inspection. The doctor has examined the ship's papers and now is looking over the crew. He must not make a mistake. If he should miss a case of a contagious disease, a new epidemic might start in this port. The doctors proceed with a cheerful, pleasant manner, but at all times a real responsibility rests on their shoulders. These rugged sailors have a healthy color from their months at sea. Why, John, why the beard? You look like an old sea salt. Well, Chris, did you get over that broken arm? Good. Oh, you're looking fine, Hans. Say, Pete, you don't look so well. What's the matter? Have the boy's been making you do all the work? A rash and your stomach upset, eh? Better let me look you over in the medical room. Too bad, boy. The doctor talks the case over with the officers. He fears the boy has chicken pox. This doesn't quarantine the ship, but the boy will be sent to a hospital in port. Further examination of Pete showed that he did have chicken pox. Now the three dining room boys from Java. They are accustomed to the medical examination and smile confidently at the doctor. Just think, in one year, the United States quarantine inspectors examine around a million crewmen on ships entering this country from foreign ports. The doctor continues his examination and inspects the officers next. Dr. Mike signals the pilot on the boarding boat to radio Dr. Kemp, the chief medical officer, to order a bed at the hospital. The boarding boat has direct contact with the quarantine station by way of radio communication. That enables Dr. Mike to consult Dr. Kemp in case of any emergency. Q2 calling QS. Q2 calling QS. A familiar sound in Dr. Kemp's office. Dr. Kemp listens intently and is sure the diagnosis is correct. In case of a doubtful diagnosis, Dr. Kemp goes to the ship for a consultation. Dr. Kemp calls his assistant to make arrangements with the hospital and to have an ambulance meet the boat. That makes three cases for the hospital in the last two days. Another ship, the Margarita, has radioed in that they have severe sickness aboard. The ambulance was at the dock when the Sarangan arrived and took Pete to the general hospital. It was a good thing, too, because he had a bad case of chickenpox. He was cured and rejoined his ship on its return trip to this port. Dr. Kemp calls the Margarita for later news on the patient there. It sounds like an attack of appendicitis. This is all in the day's work for Dr. Kemp. The United States public health doctors save many lives in their long distance radio treatment of patients at sea. The chief officer is responsible for the medical inspections and runs the station with its staff of 20 men. Meantime, Dr. Mike and Inspector Sheridan proceed to the next ship on the day's list, a modern Swedish freighter of the Johnson line. She carries a cargo of newsprint paper, wood pulp, and fine cheese from the Scandinavian countries. Her last port in England was Liverpool, which is not a plague port. En route, however, she stopped at a South American plague port, and so the quarantine officers will look especially for signs of diseases that might be brought in from South America. They will check for the South American mosquito that carries yellow fever. Dr. Mike examines the ship's papers and chats with his friend, the captain. These ships have very fine passenger accommodations, 
and the doctor will check each person whose name is on the passenger list. First, he examines the family of a prominent planter from Santo Domingo. Senor Perez brings his little daughter Maria up for her examination. She immediately likes Dr. Mike. Does she have any aches or pains? Indeed, she has. And she tells the doctor all about it. Didn't she pinch her finger in the door? And it still hurts, too. See? See, doctor? Well, she'd like to talk longer with a nice doctor, but now it's Roger's turn. He really can't think of a single thing to tell the kind doctor. He just feels fine. And he's been having a wonderful time on board, too. The children look very well. And then the doctor examines their father. And next, the children's nurse. Their mother is waiting for them in the United States. The doctor treats everyone alike and gives each person on board his careful attention. Mr. Bannard intends to live in the United States permanently. All people who are entering permanently must have blood tests and x-rays of their chests. Dr. Mike examines Mr. Bannard's x-ray. Everyone must have a record of these tests before he can get a visa to enter the United States. After Dr. Mike has examined the crew, this ship will have passed quarantine, the last one to be examined this morning. When airplanes arrive in the United States from foreign ports, they also must pass a medical quarantine examination. In a year, over a million aircraft passengers arrive in this country from foreign ports, and they must be examined by the United States Public Health Service. The public health doctors